So I'm clear. I think he's talking about a UPS, so a UPS worker who lives and works in Vermont, they would be subject to the payroll tax regardless of whether they took the insurance from their employer. Is that what I heard you say? Right. I'm okay. saying the employee would still have to pay the payroll contribution, and the employer can choose to say, okay, now you are covered in the Vermont single care plan. Right. We are going to that it, uh, not give you the regular benefit benefits except the wraparound. And or the employer can say you're covered under both. Right. That means that uh, extra payment. Yes. What about there are many Vermonters who work in New Hampshire for Dartmouth College or for the medical center there, that sort of thing. Would, I understand you can't, can you, would they still be subject to the payroll tax since they're paid by a New Hampshire employer or what would you do there? You're saying that Vermont residents right. who is working in, working in Vermont. Working in New Hampshire. Working in New Hampshire. Right. What happens to them? That's the same situation in the UPS it, But it, it's different because they're not working, they're not paid in state. I think it's a different... I, I, the, the situation you described is somebody who is a resident of Vermont but working for an employer who's outside of Vermont, like UPS or Thomas Hitchcock. Well, I thought he was talking about a situation where just someone's covered by a national health insurance. Steve Capel said that you you weren't going to go across the border to tax them if they were in New Hampshire, that you couldn't. No, we, we were still require the person to pay the employee portion. We cannot regulate the employer side. I would just say that, John, that this, one, this is an area that we want to look at. Two, um, these are not issues that are unfamiliar to the state legislature. Uh, these are issues that we had to grapple when we did uh, the Kavanaugh plan and when we've dealt with other health care programs in the past. My guess is that that would be something that we would have to deal with uh, in the health care committee to address the concerns with regard to interstate commerce. Dr. Shaw, is it realistic for the legislature to adopt this bill as a plan this year? Hoping that it can take go into effect in 2014, when it, <clears throat> the Congress will probably not will probably not allow that to be done. Can this thing be kept on hold till 2017 and then kick in then when the feds allow it, or will it sort of wither away before then? We understand from the consultation we made, the federal government could give a state a waiver once the PPACA get implemented, but then you have to get a waiver. If, and the reason why the Cong Congress did not, under the present law, allow a waiver until 2017 is because Congress wants to make sure there's a database already built up how much the federal government would give to that state for the PPACA program. And we believe that once you you have one year of experience, which is 2014, that can be an adequate base for the federal government to calculate how much they should give Vermont a waiver but the, and, and the block grant for what the federal government would have spent in Vermont. <laughs> but that needs to be worked out, and that has to be negotiated with the federal government. And, and if, if the question is also what you're asking, um, would it be unusual for the legislature to put together a plan that was implemented over the course of years? I, I think the answer to that would be no, it is not unusual. Um, and it would be appropriate for us to do so. We've done it in energy legislation in the past. We've done it in healthcare uh, legislation that we've done in the past. Um, and it would uh, be appropriate for us to put together legislation that has triggering mechanisms that would happen at some point in time in the future. 
Um, in order to calculate the savings, presumably you had to make assumptions about how much the buyers were going to be reimbursed in the system, um, either in a global way for the total budget or for specific services. How much are you using? How did you determine how much they're going to receive? How did you we have <coughs> data and we examine them to know in total how much the hospitals are being reimbursed or paid within Vermont and outside Vermont and how much the physicians are being paid. And we propose in our plan that you move to a uniform payment system largely it's doing a transition period. That transition period is you're trying to tra make a transition from the current fragmented delivery system to an integrated delivery system. So during that transition period, we recommend you largely follow the payment methods of the Medicare program and then also then establish a rate based on these <coughs> units of payment. But make sure in total you do not pay the providers any less than you would have paid. But there could be some redistribution. Like right now, some specialties may be paid very generously. That could be reduced that money could be shifted for primary care. And that, that I think, is what needs to be negotiated. Right. <laughs> it seems like there are a lot of doctors who will tell you, I can't operate for Medicare uh, rates. That that's going to be the state. They can't, they can't make a business here doing that. Uh, right. In our proposal, in our calculation, we propose that all the payers raise their payment rates, and that's including Medicaid and Medicare, raise this rate to make the hospitals and physicians whole. That means Medicare, Medicaid have to raise its payment rates, but the, the private insurance will actually lower their payment rate. Dr. Shaw, could you talk a little bit about the basic um, benefit that would be made available to Vermonters and how that might compare with um, a plan that might be available through, say, a local school or through the Vermont State Employees Association? Is there a great difference between the two, or are they similar? In Vermont, you'll have a highly varied benefit packages for Vermonters. Some Vermonters have really minimum or very inadequate benefit package. Some have a very complete. The one we propose is to you provide the benefit benefits at the current average level, which means that for medical and mental health services. If the patient incurred a reasonable cost of $100, the insurance will pay $87 of that. For drugs, if the reasonable cost of that drug is $100, the insurance will pay $77 of that $100. And in our proposed essential benefit plan, the current the current benefit they have now for dental and for vision care will be increased. Now, for those who have more than this average, like many we understand, let's say you mentioned teachers. Some teachers in various towns have negotiated higher benefits, more generous benefits than that. They can keep their benefits, they develop a wraparound this big standard benefit. So they will not lose. But then this is way to bring everybody up upward to a, some standard benefit package. We have time for one more question. On the benefits that so it's I, I believe I read 
there's no deductible because there are some small co-pays. That, that would be the general. That's right. Deductible is actually is not a good de benefit design. Deductible, even with the exempting preventive services like mammogram or colonoscopy, <coughs> it deters patients for early seeking treatment and diagnosis early. Then patients wait until their illness becomes quite serious, then they will go because they have to pay everything completely out of their own pocket. So in the world, we know one of the worst kind of design is this deductible kind of plan. And, but the United States actually have gone down that road in the past 15 years. And then under President Bush, President Bush pushed that to fill it in with so-called a health savings account. Then think who will get the who pop into the savings, health savings accounts. Employer will give a flat cash and say, I will deposit into this, your health savings account. Then your benefit being on the insurance side only kick in, let's say, $2,500. The young people and the healthy people will opt into that. The sick, the elderly, older workers know their expenses is going to be exceeding $2,500. They, the, they are the losers. And this has been going on in America. It's one of the fundamental problems in America. And we, we are recommending to Vermont, you move away from that. We know better. This is not the way to design benefit package to emphasize prevention, early detection, and early treatment of illnesses. 